Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Treating Thyroid Eye Disease, a podcast for people who have thyroid eye disease or TED and are looking to learn more about Tepeza, which is the first and only FDA-approved treatment for TED. So throughout this series, you can learn more about TED and hear from doctors, experts, and real Tepeza patients about their experiences treating TED with Tepeza. I'm one of your guest hosts for today. My name is Amina Malik, and I'm an oculoplastic surgeon based in Houston Methodist. I have a busy clinical practice here at Houston Methodist Hospital and see several patients daily with TED. Today, we're going to be digging more into the science behind TED for a special Science Daily podcast episode. And I'm excited to be joined by Dr. Randall Thomas, an optometrist. Hi, Dr. Thomas. Hi, Dr. Malik. Pleasure to get to meet you. Not, not in person, of course, but electronically, which really bridges a lot of gaps. At any rate, I'm pleased. It's a pleasure for me to join you in co-hosting this series. And I have a background. I've been practicing with a group of ophthalmologists for the last 30 years. Now, during that time, I've seen several patients with thyroid eye disease. Most of them, of course, have already a diagnosis of Graves' disease, but some are brand newly diagnosed during the course of my routine practice. So we're now at a point that we need to go ahead and look at diving in to get to getting started and discuss uh, the basics, such as who gets TED, uh, what, do, what can we do about it, and those sorts of basic fundamentals. Sure. So let's uh, dive right in. So what is TED, first of all? So TED is an autoimmune condition. So normally our immune system can tell the difference between our normal cells and foreign cells, such as bacteria. But with autoimmune diseases, such as TED, our immune system actually attacks healthy parts of our body by mistake. And in particular, in thyroid eye disease, the immune system attacks the cells behind the eyes, which leads to downstream inflammation, which leads to problems with the muscles that move the eye, as well as the fatty tissues behind the eyes. Now, autoimmune diseases are chronic, lifelong conditions. And TED occurs most commonly among patients with Graves' disease, although it can occur with patients with hypo or euthyroid, though it's just less common. Now, it's important to realize that Graves' disease is an autoimmune disease, but it's separate from TED, where TED requires its own treatment separate from the treatment of Graves' disease. Now, over the years, the terminology has changed. TED has been referred to in the past as thyroid-associated orbitopathy, Graves' orbitopathy, and other variations until uh, TED has become more common over the last decade or so. So, Dr. Thomas, should we dive into some of the symptoms? Well, that was a great question, Dr. Malik. It is interesting to get a grip on how patients present. What we might be looking for is primary eye care physicians and, and see what we can do to make sure we don't miss thyroid eye disease. Many, many patients have dry eyes and they'll come in complaining of dry, sandy, gritty, burning eyes. And the vast majority of those will be plain old dry eye disease. But there will be a subset of those that will be an expression of thyroid eye disease. Probably even more commonly, it was the bulging eyes, that what we call proptosis. And looking at people's appearance, just look at their eyelids, see, see if they're puffy and red, see if their eyes are white, or do they have some kind of conjunctival injection? Is there any kind of pain, uh, even pain on motion of the eye? And uh, basically, if they have a history of Graves' disease, then that would make us even all the more attentive. But uh, certainly, uh, looking at the dryness and the bulging are probably the two things that bring to my mind very quickly the possibility of TED. So if there's any patient listening to this program that you think, you know, you might have some of these symptoms or the way of your appearance, uh, then certainly go see uh, any eye doctor and they can get you into the system. But having a previous diagnosis of Graves' disease, as Dr. Malik has already expressed, is probably the most common denominator of people that go on to develop thyroid eye disease. So it's just something to keep in mind. I would definitely speak to your primary care physician or an endocrinologist to get a more definitive systemic workup. Great. And Dr. Thomas, you mentioned Graves' disease as a risk factor for TED, and that's a really important risk factor. But there are also others, uh, including being a female. Uh, females have at least three times higher likelihood of developing TED than males, um, but men can still be affected. And oftentimes when they are affected, their disease course can be more severe. 
Age is also an important risk factor. TED can have a bimodal distribution affecting middle-aged adults, but then it can also be seen in the older population. And smoking is a huge factor. P uh, patients who smoke are at a much higher risk of developing thyroid eye disease, and when they do get it, it's usually more severe. The few patients I've seen who have had sight-threatening optic neuropathy have all been smokers, so important to, to realize about some of these other risk factors in patients with TED. And also, there was just a new article published September of 2023 that said that type 1 diabetes has now been discovered to be a risk factor as well. So that's something else to consider. Yeah, that's true. Patients who have one autoimmune disease are definitely going to be at risk for others. That's very true. So the key for us as frontline physicians is to really be super vigilant. Listen to the patient. Pay attention to what they're saying. You know, don't blow off their, their symptoms. So... Uh, there's a wide variety of presentations and you have to be careful and try to discern, you know, what's real and what has been there for a long time and just newly discovered. January 2020 was, you know, a huge turning point in the treatment of thyroid eye disease because uh, before Tepeza, which is the first and only FDA approved treatment for TED, we really had very limited options, as you mentioned. Um, you know, there was sort of a watch and wait approach, uh, especially during the active phase when we wouldn't want to do surgery. Um, at that point, really, the mainstay would, were steroids, uh, which, of course, can have several side effects. Um, and then once they became stable, uh, during which time, of course, they were still symptomatic and bothered, we could offer surgery. Um, now, many patients uh, were not thrilled about the option of surgery. And when presented with the option of medical therapy versus surgery, uh, most patients are going to choose a, a medical uh, option. So when patients come to me for evaluation of thyroid eye disease, I first perform a complete exam on them, checking for some of the common signs we see like proptosis, lid retraction, redness, swelling, dryness. And, you know, once we have established that there is a diagnosis, then the Next step is to talk about the treatment options. And this is really where we talked about TED not being a cookie cutter disease comes into play because there's not just a recipe book we follow, but it really is an individualized treatment approach depending on how symptomatic or bothered a patient is. Um, you know, if it's just a little bit of dryness that could be treated with lubrication, then sometimes that's an option. And we talk it to together, I try to make sure that they know what all of their options are. If they're in the inactive phase or chronic phase, surgery is still an option and um, that, that can be considered as well. Um, but I really let the patients decide for themselves what treatment option they want to do. I feel my job is to educate them about the disease and the options are, are, that are out there, um, but it really is, it's, on to, it's up to my patients to really decide what they want to pursue. In addition, when we talk about surgery, it's not always just one surgery that is, was used to treat thyroid eye disease. It often might take several surgeries, starting with orbital decompression, where we remove bone and fat behind the eye to allow the eye to decompress posteriorly to help treat some of the bulging or proptosis that these patients develop. Uh, now, many patients can also have double vision. And so they might have had to undergo strabismus surgery where the eye muscles become aligned to help straighten the eyes. And then often these patients would require a third surgery uh, to treat lid retraction where the eyes are widely open, which is another classic characteristic of thyroid eye disease. Um, so some of these patients were looking at three different surgeries spaced out, you know, several months in time. So um, it, it, was, it was not the ideal treatment situation. In, in addition to the surgical treatment, it's important uh, for us to treat our patient's symptoms. So they might be experiencing dryness or grittiness, as you mentioned. For that, they often might need to use over-the-counter teardrops and gel. And I'm sure as an optometrist, you see loss of these sorts of symptoms of dryness and grittiness, and you have to make a decision between when you're going to refer them on to specialists or treating the symptoms. So could you share what with us what you typically do when you think a patient has TED so that if someone's eye doctor isn't taking their symptoms seriously, they might know whether they should go to get a second opinion? Right. And, and again, just for the, the public to know, an oculoplastic subspecialist is trained as an ophthalmic surgeon and people like Dr. Malik just specialize in diseases of the orbit, the extraocular muscles, the eyelids, the the tear drainage system, and those tissues. So the absolute uh, top of the heap here, if you will, is an oculoplastic ophthalmic specialist 
uh, they're going to be the ones that will be able to make a highly sensitive and specific diagnosis. What is it that we do when we encounter a patient that we think might have thyroid eye disease? Certainly, we will question them. We'll ask them if they're, if they're aware they have any kind of thyroid problems. Have they seen an endocrinologist? One of the tests that we do is called exophthalmometry. It's a big word, exophthalmometry. And it's a, it's a very simple little instrument that lets us measure how far the eyes protrude from their orbits. And that's one of the key measurements that are made. And then beyond that, if we really feel like there's something going on, we can order a CT scan and get an idea of how the eye muscles, uh, their anatomy, because eye muscles tend to swell. And that's part of the whole uh, pathology of thyroid eye disease is swelling of the muscles, swelling of the uh, fat tissue that's in the orbit, and when those tissues swell, they, that's what pushes the eye forward and gives you that uh, presentation. But if I really feel like they, they have the real deal, uh, then I would certainly uh, trigger a referral to my favorite oculoplastic subspecialist and have them take, take it from there. I will have done my job to get them to the right doctor. I mean, it's so frustrating to treat their dry eye and to have them tape their eyelids closed at night and, and just do kind of been looking back almost primitive but essential things because that's all we had to offer and now we can address the disease at at a target level and uh, and treat the whole gamut of clinical presentations so can you go ahead and walk us through exactly how tapeza works i mean what is the mechanism what is the means of intervening therapeutically and what options now do patients have? Sure. So, you know, getting back to our discussion about it being an autoimmune disease. Uh, so there are receptors on the tissues behind our eyes that are activated uh, by molecules called autoantibodies. Um, and oftentimes these antibodies are elevated in patients with thyroid eye disease and they can trigger the body's immune system to attack the the tissue mistakenly. So if you kind of think of the receptor as a switch and when the switch is on and the antibody is binding to the receptor in our bloodstream, that leads to downstream inflammation, which causes the symptoms of eye pain, uh, eyelid swelling, redness, many of the things we talked about. And Tepeza was really designed to bind this switch and block it from turning on, preventing the autoantibodies from attacking it and thereby preventing that downstream inflammation, along with it, many of those signs and symptoms that patients experience. So Tepeza can help the muscles and the fat swelling to go down behind the eyes, um, which can also alleviate some of the double vision and the proptosis. And in clinical studies, which were performed, Tepeza was shown to significantly reduce the degree of bulging, uh, the improved double vision, relief from eye pain, swelling, redness, um, and even improved visual appearance as reported by patients. So really with one medication, providing relief for many different symptoms. And Tepeza is also approved for TED regardless of how many months or years someone has been living with the condition. Um, and it's an IV treatment. You know, patients often want to know how it's administered. So it is an infusion and there are eight that are administered and each is scheduled three weeks apart, which means a full course takes about five months. Now, it's important to remember too, though, that everyone's experience with Depeza is different and infusion reactions can happen during or within 24 hours after the Depeza infusion. And if patients do have a reaction, um, it's a, the doctor or nurse who's infusing will slop, slow or stop the rate and treat the reaction. Um, and if there is a severe rea infusion reaction, though those are quite rare, uh, the prescriber might stop treatment completely. It's really important to just talk to your provider about your individual benefits and risks if you're considering Tepeza. As we saw, TED is not a um, cookie cutter disease. There are many signs and symptoms. And so along with that, you want to make sure that that treatment is best um, for you. And I think it's great if you have a referral pattern for when or if someone 
presents with TED. And I would encourage patients to actually find an eye care professional that they can trust that can get them to the right place um, where they do have uh, those special specialized physicians that they can refer to. And I often work closely with optometrists, endocrinologists, general ophthalmologists who will see patients with TED because of its link to Graves disease. Well, that's a good point. And, that, and the reality is that most patients see either an optometrist or a general ophthalmologist for their eye care needs. And so it's important that all of us in, in general eye care have a targeted oculoplastic specialist who is steeped in the therapy with Tepeza, so we have a direct pathway to get patients the most optimum care in a very efficient way. And so all of us on the front line, including the endocrinologist, I mean, endocrinologists certainly should have a, an oculoplastic uh, physician in their hip pocket and be able to direct patients directly there. They don't have to go from an eye doctor, they can go from a, an endocrinologist as well. So all of us sort of at the primary care gate uh, need to have in our head ahead of time a pathway to get these patients highly efficient and effective care. And I just wanted to highlight that Tepeza can improve symptoms in those who have been living with TED for any amount of time from days or diagnosis to years. Some patients might think they've had the disease for too long to get treatment, but that's not the case at all, um, as we've talked about, that it can be given at any point. Um, so, you know, it's important not to give up hope that you're not a candidate. Um, you should just find a TED eye specialist and uh, one that will actually take you seriously and listen to your symptoms and how TED can affect your life um, because the disease can impact patients' lives in many ways, not just from symptoms, but also can be debilitating from a functional standpoint. So it's just been really exciting to see this new development and option for patients. You know, it's interesting in the evolution of healthcare, there are, there are not that many breakthrough drugs or milestone drugs. Now, Tepeza is another one of these major milestone breakthrough drugs. Again, as you mentioned, Dr. Malik, none of these medicines are perfect. Uh, there are side effects, <clears throat> there are concerns and considerations <clears throat> that have to be taken. But by and large, this is a godsend for so many patients with, as you mentioned, all stages of thyroid eye disease. No, absolutely. And, you know, it's not every day that we have patients who are in tears in our eyes, but I've definitely had more than one patient with tears of gratitude after, you know, suffering from thyroid eye disease and then having this medicine. And if you have TED, um, it's also important to discuss any pre-existing inflammatory bowel disease with your doctor, as well as uh, whether you have diabetes or pre-diabetic. And if you're pregnant or planning to become pregnant or are breastfeeding. So I think it's important to remember all of those and then just have that discussion with your healthcare provider again uh, when you're considering treatment with this. Now, Dr. Thomas, is there anything you want to add out before we close today's uh, episode? No, but you gave a very excellent and broad description of the pros and cons and the efficacy and the, the outcomes of intervention with Tepeza. I, I mean, it's a, it's a big deal. And Many people, especially those with, with bulging eyes, tend to get a, an improvement in, in their appearance, not so much in how their eyes function, although if you get your eyeballs back in your orbits, you'll have a lot less dryness uh, and grittiness and, uh, and discomfort, so they'll be less dependent on on artificial tears and that kind of thing. And that wraps up this episode of Treating Thyroid Eye Disease podcast. Uh, we thank you all so much for listening. And for more information, please visit tepeza.com. Again, that is T-E-P-E-Z-Z-A.com and follow the Tepeza Facebook and Instagram communities. And to find a TED specialist in your area, you can visit tedspecialist.com. Tepeza is a prescription medicine used to treat thyroid eye disease or TED no matter if you've had TED for months or years. Important safety information. What is the most important information I should know about Tepeza? Infusion reactions can happen during or within 24 hours after your infusion of Tepeza. If you have a reaction while receiving Tepeza, your doctor or nurse will slow or stop your infusion and treat your reaction. If you have a severe infusion reaction, your doctor may stop your treatment completely. Tell your doctor or nurse right away if you have any of these symptoms during or after your treatment with Tepeza. High blood pressure, difficulty breathing, fast heartbeat, headache, redness of the face feeling hot, muscle pain. 
If you have inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, Depeza may make your IBD symptoms worse. Symptoms of worsening IBD may include an increased number of loose stools with stomach pain or cramps, and blood in your stools. After each Depeza infusion, tell your doctor right away if you have worsening IBD symptoms. Depeza may cause an increase in your blood sugar. Before starting treatment with Depeza, tell your doctor if you are currently being treated for diabetes, know your blood sugar is high, or have been diagnosed with diabetes. It is important for you to take your treatments and follow an appropriate diet for glucose control as prescribed by your doctor. Depeza may cause severe hearing problems including hearing loss, which in some cases may be permanent. Tell your doctor if you have any signs or symptoms of hearing problems or changes in hearing. Before receiving Depeza, tell your doctor if you have inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, are currently being treated for diabetes, have been diagnosed with diabetes, or know your blood sugar is high, are pregnant or plan to become pregnant. Depeza may harm your unborn baby. Tell your doctor if you become pregnant or suspect you are pregnant during treatment with Tepeza. Women who are able to become pregnant should use an effective form of birth control, contraception, prior to starting treatment, during treatment, and for at least six months after the final dose of Tepeza. Are breastfeeding or plan to breastfeed? It is not known if Tepeza passes into your breast milk. Talk to your doctor about the best ways to feed your baby during treatment with Tepeza. Tell your doctor about all the medicines you take, including prescription and over-the-counter medicines, vitamins, dietary, and herbal supplements. Know the medicines you take. Keep a list of them to show your doctor and pharmacist when you get a new medicine. What are the possible side effects of Tepeza? The most common side effects of Tepeza include muscle cramps or spasms, nausea, hair loss, diarrhea, feeling tired, high blood sugar, hearing problems, taste changes, headache, dry skin, weight loss, nail problems, and changes in menstruation. This is not a complete list of all possible side effects. Tell your doctor or treatment team about any side effect you may have. You are encouraged to report negative side effects of prescription drugs to the FDA. Visit www.fda.gov safety slash medwatch or call 1-800-FDA-1088. Please visit tepeza.com for more information.